Welcome to the next video in the discrete math video series. And so we're going to go ahead and produce this truth table. Here it is. <clears throat> As usual, transcribe the values for P and Q. Then we can compute this negation. The order does not necessarily matter, right? You, I could compute this next, or I could compute this next uh, either way. Um, I'm gonna get to them, uh, well, yeah, anyway, so I'm just, just cause I am already looking at this and thinking about this one, I'm gonna do this one. And so, uh, T, F, T, uh, I'm right here. I might as well go ahead and do the biconditional. So this is gonna come out true when the two values match. So that's uh, here that's true, here that's true, elsewhere false. Okay, cool. <clears throat> I think the next thing to do is to come over to here and say, well, it's true when they match, so that's here and here, everywhere else it is false. And next I'm going to XOR the thing on the left and the thing on the right. That's where the values are gonna come from. And XOR is true when they mismatch. So here that's a true, cause I'm looking at a true on the left and a false on the right. The next one is false on the left and true on the right, false on the left, true on the right, true on the left, false on the right. There are all of the truth values. And the all of the values under the main operator, this is the main operator, and all the values under the main operator are true. When that is true, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in future sections, uh, when all the truth values are true, we call that a tautology. Did I spell that right? Tut, nope. <laughs> Tutol, oh, tautology. Uh, jeez. Uh, okay, yes, there. Good, finally. Okay, uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that more later, but since I was looking at it, then I wanted to just go ahead and remark on it. Um, but let's carry on. Is there anything else? Oh, yes, precedence rules. So you're probably familiar with precedence rules. You know, like... Uh, uh, mathematicians are always complaining about those like Facebook memes or whatever where people are like, what is the correct value of two plus one times three divided by, I don't know, uh, maybe I didn't choose the best number, let's say six divided by uh, uh, three or something like that. Okay, so and then, you know, like, uh, then they shame people for being so stupid because they don't remember the... Um, the order of operations, right? So they're like, oh, some people think it goes like this, three times six divided by three, and then that goes uh, 18 divided by uh, three, and then that goes, uh, that that's six. And oh, look at these dummies who don't remember math or whatever. Well, this is this is not the most interesting thing, right? I mean, like, yeah, that's not the order of operations that we usually use, but who cares about the order of operations? This is like, you know, like mathematicians look at those Facebook memes and they just think, you know, anybody who thinks this is interesting math is just, they're the real dummies. So, uh, and, you know, and like, it's not as though one order of operations is correct or mathematically correct. It's like any order of, you just pick an order of operations and then live with it. It's, that's kind of all there is to it. So that's not even math, right, in a certain way. Anyway, anyway. Okay, so math has an order of operations. The correct order of operations, by the way, is that we would do multiplication first so that this would really become 2 plus 6 divided by 3. And then we would do division next, so this would become 2 plus 2. And then this is 4. And that's the correct order using the usual order of operations in mathematics. Uh, let's go on to, right, so there are orders of operations, right? Or, you know, although I have just spent uh, several minutes disparaging any interest in order of operations, well, there is good reason, right? I, it's not as though we shouldn't have an order of operations or something like that. It's just that, you know, like, uh, well, we should, right? They're important. It's just, uh, not interesting. But anyway, but, but, but it's important, so let's do it. Uh, Suppose that you had a sentence, or sorry, not a sentence, an expression, a mathematical expression like this. Its order of operations says that exponentiation comes first, right? This is part of PEMDAS, if you've heard of PEMDAS, or I know uh, different people in different countries have different abbreviations for the order of operations. But in any case, 
Uh, so it says parentheses go first. In this uh, particular example, there are no parentheses. Uh, exponents come next, so the x squared is the first thing that you would do if you were sort of uh, putting parentheses around to make explicit what the order of operations should be. Uh, okay, so exponents come first, then comes multiplication, so then you would put parentheses around these because that's a multiplication operation in between, and you'd put parentheses around the 3 and the x because that indicates that the multiplication operation there takes uh, earlier precedence than anything any of the other operations not yet already covered. And then finally, addition comes uh, next, and so... Uh, but that's the last symbol anyway, so we don't even need parentheses to make that explicit. Okay, that is the familiar order of operations for for mathematics. And then uh, for our logical symbols, we also use an order of operations. And it's arbitrary, right? There's no right or wrong order of operations. But the one that most of us have generally agreed to adopt is that negation is the most... Uh, you know, the earliest in the order, right? It, it, it takes greater, it, sometimes we say that it has the greatest binding strength, that it binds before the other operations bind. So that if you wrote this whole sentence, then negation goes first. So you put the parens around that to make it explicit, if you wanted to, right? I mean, like, you know, the kind of the point of the order of operations is so that you don't have to write the parentheses, but writing the parentheses is just like this little exercise that we do so that we can show explicitly which things take which precedence. But anyway, so if we were going to put parentheses on this to make it equivalent to that, then we'd put parentheses on the negation P. Then next would come the conjunction, right? That has the next earliest binding order. And then uh, the we would put a, a parentheses for the disjunction after that. So that's why, like, these parentheses, I think, right there. No. There. Uh, anyway, uh, so, or yeah, yeah, so those are the parens to encapsulate the conjunction, and that's what makes it explicit that the disjunction is reading this whole thing on the left and it's, uh, you know, R on the right. And okay, so that's what you would do for the disjunction, and then for the condition, the conditional comes next, right? So you would put parens like that for to help the conditional to, to make explicit what the left-hand side of the conditional is. S is still on the right. And then the thing with the weakest binding order is the biconditional. So then you could put parentheses like that to help the biconditional to see that uh, the whole left-hand side is on the left, you know, for, for the biconditional. So, okay, anyway. So that's the whole idea of the precedence rules for our uh, logical operators. So, right, the important thing is that it goes negation, conjunction, disjunction, conditional, blah, blah, blah. So uh, here's an exercise. Let's give the truth table for this expression and notice that in order to parse it correctly, you have to use the precedence rules.